Hey, today is National Relaxation Day, a perfect excuse to tune into your mental health and to take a second to pause and find your calm. So here are some tips on finding relaxation every day. We have Kelly Smith. She is a mindfulness expert and creator of Mindful in Minutes podcast. Kelly, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. How are you? Welcome. I'm good. I also love a tote bag, too. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get you one on your way out. Oh, my gosh. Uh, she me. needs to submit the Minnesota. <laughs> Stickler over here. <laughs> Tell us about being mindful and relaxation. What does that really mean for someone as we kind of highlight it today? You know, I do think that it can mean whatever you want it to mean, but for me, it really boils down to like the nervous system and getting out of that constant stress, that fight or flight, that activated state, and being able to shift more into that restful, more present, deactivated state. I think some, uh, a lot of people think they're relaxing if they're just like maybe sitting there scrolling on their phone or whatever, but uh, that's, that, that's not the case. That's, that's not really getting your mind cleared. No, it's not. And I sometimes, and I, before I say this, I like to say I engage in that as well. Yeah, I definitely, well, doesn't, right? we I, all do. Right. I think of that as more of like a numbing, checking out technique yep. where practicing mindfulness is being fully present with something. And it's really hard to be fully present when you're just kind of scrolling through, doing a whole lot of nothing, if you will. It's not really being mindful. It's just kind of numbing and shutting down the brain instead of really engaging with the mind. So what are some of your favorite techniques, right, for being mindful and really getting the benefit of doing that? So something that I really love to do is a mindfulness walk, especially this time of year. Like, what's more beautiful than a Minnesota summer? And as we're going into fall, which is, like, the best here, yeah. I love going outside without any devices. You walk slowly, intentionally, and you just enjoy the sensation of walking and being present with nature. That's one that I love. You can also bring your kids. If you have kids, you can do that as well. Bring them with you and say, oh, what colors do you see? Oh my gosh, what sounds do you hear? Isn't this amazing? And it's a really great kind of family mindfulness activity. Uh, big picture, you, you say here that after eight weeks of meditation, like people do really see a huge difference. That's not that big of a commitment. It's not, I mean. <laughs> it's not, especially because you don't need that long to meditate. We were chatting a little bit before we were chatting here about how studies tell us we only need eight minutes a day to meditate, and that's what your brain needs. So if we think about stress, fear, and anxiety, that comes from this part of the brain called the amygdala. It's like the fear, worry center of your brain. And studies have shown us that you need anywhere from eight to 12 minutes a day of meditation, and it deactivates the amygdala, and after eight weeks, your amygdala actually shrinks or atrophies, which means you have smaller physiological responses to fear, pain, anxiety, and stress. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. We, we love some science around here. Good. So <laughs> where do you go for eight minutes a day? What, how, do you, how do you do the eight minutes a day? Because if it's not sitting here just watching TV and disconnecting, mm -hmm. You know, you're a mom of a 10-month-old and a 3-year-old, and I, we kind of joked in the commercial. I'm like, how are you getting eight minutes by yourself every day? You know what? I think that the secret to success is finding a time where you know you'll be alone, especially if it's hard. So for me, that often looks like I finally have gotten everyone in bed, and you kind of do that like, whew, okay, everyone's in their rooms, doors are shut. My time. I did it, yes. And so doing those eight minutes, I love to do it before bed because I struggle with having a busy mind at night and you're thinking about the million things your kids are doing yes. or the stressful thing you saw on the news, whatever it is. I like to use it to kind of turn down the volume on my brain before I go to sleep. So I take eight minutes right before I go to sleep. Some people love to get up in the morning, whether they have kids or not. First eight minutes or 10 minutes of the day is a great time to do it. You could do your lunch break, like wherever you think you'll be able to realistically do it and stick with it, that's the best time. Can I ask without getting too personal, like what your eight minutes look like? Is it just yeah. calm and quiet? Is it journaling? Is it, what? what is that eight minutes? Okay, so I have this little evening routine that I love that starts with eight minutes of meditation, which is either, it can be anything. So meditation is just single point concentration. So if you think of your mind as a light bulb, when you're being mindful, you're turning the light up all the way to illuminate whatever you're doing, walking, you can even fold your clothes mindfully, whatever it is. Meditation is turning the brain from the light bulb to a laser pointer, and you focus your laser one thing. It could be your breath, it could be checking in with how your body's feeling, it can be listening to a guided meditation, that's what I do on my podcast, short guided meditations you can listen to, someone's going to walk you through a practice, you can do that. So I love to do kind of my eight to 10 minutes of meditation. And then I've been enjoying just a little creative writing. So not even necessarily journaling, just writing whatever comes out um, and then saying, okay, bedtime, go to bed. Hopefully the baby lets me sleep through the night. Let's wrap this up. That's it. Tell me about the, the, the vagus nerve stimulation. Yeah. 
The vagus nerve happens to be my personal favorite cranial nerve. We have many, but this one's my favorite because it is a big player in the mind-body connection. So it's actually a bilateral nerve, which means that it goes from your mind and actually runs through your throat. So you can stimulate it through things like um, you know, breathing in through the nose, open mouth, exhale. You can hum, you can sing a song, you can kind of like, I like to do this thing where you take your kind of pointer finger and middle finger and you rub right here lightly on either side of the ears. It stimulates the vagus nerve and it's been shown to have a direct correlation to getting you out of your fight or flight and into your rest and digest. And so you can like instantly start feeling better and it helps to soothe your nervous system. Okay, next up, some, a type of yoga. Yes, yoga nidra. Nidra. Which is a no movement form of yoga. And so yoga nidra translates to yogic sleep. And it feels like a long guided meditation. And the whole point of it is that you're going step by step. So you start by relaxing your body. And then you go a little bit deeper. You do a little bit of breath work to relax the nervous system. Then you go even further. You do like a little bit of emotion work. And then you go into visualization. And it not only helps to physically put the body to sleep, but it's also really great if you want like a longer decompression practice because it's more extended, but no movement. You can do it in bed. You can listen to it to fall asleep. And also over time, it helps to train the body to fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer. Thank you, Kelly. Good stuff. Yeah, thanks guys. Thanks nice for having you. me. Thank you. On. you can celebrate National Relaxation Day by listening to one of the hundreds of guided meditations on Kelly's podcast. We posted a link to that on minnesotalive.com.